found new memories. Okay, so we're going through these eight steps to achieving hormone synergy. We've gone through decreased stress. We've talked about eating a healthy diet, exercising, sleeping well and enough, avoiding toxins and doing a yearly detox, maintaining an ideal weight. We've talked about supplements, and now we're going to talk about bioidentical hormones. That's step eight. Many of you know that Premarin comes from pregnant mare's urine, which is from pregnant horses. So this is a horse being given human estrogen saying, you want to give me what? I don't think so. <laughs> Bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, BHRT, what does that refer to? It refers to the same molecule as produced by the human body. So when I use that term, I don't use that term to mean the, the uh, pharmaceuticals made by a compounding pharmacy. I mean a molecule that's the same as the human body. In my opinion, they should be supplemented in physiological doses, or what the body could be making. And for the most part, bioidentical hormones are safer than their synthetic counterparts. This is especially true for progesterone and testosterone. I like to separate fact from opinion when talking about bioidentical hormones, so hopefully I'm presenting the information to you fairly. Fact number one. There's a lot of research on the effectiveness of bioidentical estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone. So if you ever hear there is no research on bioidentical hormones, please know that that is an inaccurate statement. And if you would like access to that research, again, it is available free for download on our website. Um, I've been keeping it for eight, nine years, um, adding to it. If there are studies you know of that are not in there, I will be happy to put them in there if you let me know. But I don't have children, and Daniel and I don't have a life. So this is what I do all day long is I read research. <laughs> And I put it up there for anyone to see. So it's all available on our website on the resources page. Bioidentical hormones absolutely carry risks, especially when they're given in excessive dosages. But overall, bioidentical hormones are safer than synthetic hormones. This is especially true for progesterone versus progestins. More research about the long-term effects of bioidentical hormones needs to be done. I would love to be a part of that research. I think it's very important research, and we need to do more of that research. Very hard to do. Studies are extremely expensive. And these are my opinions that I share with patients. To me, it makes sense to test your levels before supplementing, just to see where you're at. It might play a role in the, in the dosages I choose. It might not. Maybe that's based more on symptoms. But it is important to test. If your levels are low or if you have symptoms, it makes sense to me, this is my opinion, to prescribe bioidentical hormones to bring you within physiological levels and help with symptoms. You need to choose somebody who's experienced, who listens to you, and gives you treatment decisions and, and makes it your responsibility, but also your right to have this information. So a lot of times people come to me, why does my doctor do this? Because we can't be good at everything. I don't do equipment anymore. I don't do pap smears. I don't do any of that because I don't do it all day long. I do anti-aging medicine. I do hormones. I do brain chemistry. That's what I love and I'm passionate about. So when people say, why does my doctor do that? It's absolutely impossible nowadays to be a physician and know everything about every subject. So you want to choose somebody who knows about that subject and also provides you with information. If you ever see on a website there's no risks, making claims that just don't seem true, it's probably not, unless that person really knows the data. So let's talk about breast cancer, because it's the first question I get when talking about bioidentical hormones. Let's talk about the facts. Women, you have a 12% chance of developing breast cancer if you live to be age 90. You also have an 88% chance of not developing breast cancer if you live to be age 90. In 2011, there was an estimated 230,000 new cases of breast cancer with 40,000 deaths. Breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths. Lung cancer is the first. And breast cancer may be preventable, just like dementia and Alzheimer's. It's good to look at your risk factors for breast cancer. And we need to separate those risk factors into modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors. The non-modifiable risk factors, things you can't do anything about. Being female, advancing age, whether or not you inherited a BRCA gene, which is a genetic increased risk for breast cancer. Early menarche, so having a period early, late menopause, or if your mom used diethylstilbestrol, which most people are, are not in that age bracket anymore. But these are the things you can do something about. These are modifiable risk factors. Obesity, lack of exercise, hormone replacement, especially synthetic progestins, poor diet, 
High animal and trans fats increase risk for breast cancer, low fiber, and certainly low fruits and vegetables. Breast trauma, late pregnancy or never having been pregnant or never having breastfed, that is a risk factor. High alcohol intake, so more than one drink a day, depends on the study. Cigarette smoking, working the graveyard shift because you suppress your melatonin. Yeah, melatonin, very potent antioxidant. Toxin exposure, radiation, xenoestrogens, remember the chemicals in the environment that mimic out estrogen in an unhealthy way in the human body. Grilled meat, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are formed when fat drips on the grill and creates smoke. This increases prostate cancer risk significantly and it increases breast cancer risk. Secondhand smoke exposure. Short telomeres. So there have been some research looking at premenopausal women and breast cancer risk and they have shorter telomeres. So just to put things in perspective and for those of you who are geeky or maybe some healthcare providers in the audience, which of the following do you think is associated with the greatest risk for breast cancer? Estrogen use, estrogen plus synthetic progestin use, or obesity? Yeah, obesity. Depends on the study, but the relative risk can be more than double. So this is some information about hormones and breast cancer risk, and this comes from a document that's also on the resources page of our website called Hormones and Breast Cancer Risk, or Hormones and Breast Cancer FAQ. It is a fact that estrogen stimulates cell proliferation in breast tissue. It is also a fact that Provera or synthetic progestin significantly increase the risk for breast cancer. It is also a fact that unopposed, no progesterone, bioidentical estrogen replacement therapy does not increase the risk for up to five years, may increase the risk after, depending on the study, and I have all, I have the main studies summarized for you. So you'll understand them. Sometimes your doctor doesn't understand them. They haven't read them. Bioidentical progesterone does not increase the risk for breast cancer. It seems to be a relative risk of one. Synthetic progestins significantly increase this risk, way more than estrogen use. Four studies using bioidentical estradiol pellets showed no increased breast cancer risk as long as that dose was less than 25 milligrams. Vaginal estrogens have never been shown to increase the risk for breast cancer, and testosterone appears to be breast protective. So most of the scare about um, estrogen and breast cancer, I have till five, comes from the Women's Health Initiative study that you've probably heard about, the WHI study. And this is what this study showed. Each 50-year-old woman has a 2.8% chance of developing breast cancer by age 60. This means 2.8 women out of...